This course will give you deeper insights regarding steel joist and metal decking design, including ways to improve the RFI process and ways to reduce a range of traditionally tolerated project costs. We will also demonstrate pros and cons regarding digital steel joist design and BIM-based project development. We will address overall project performance from the perspective of improved steel joist design and metal decking design. We will cover best engineering practices, cost-accountable architectural achievement, and the importance of taking the project owner's point of view when designing the steel package. Owner's point of view will take us into BIM-based project collaboration, and we will show some examples of BIM at work as well. Let's start by recognizing the challenge of total project performance. The steel package happens fairly early in a project, so smart design at this stage can prevent a wide range of immediate and consequential costs to the total project. Design oversights will snowball from here unless there is a proactive, collaborative effort. As owners look more carefully at project inefficiency, they are seeing a cascading cost effect. They see clashes and rework. This results in project delays and back charges. The owner burns through contingency fees, and a delayed move-in causes huge losses. A big box retail builder can lose over $100,000 a day when a project is delayed. On average, every ton of steel that can be removed translates to a $1,000 reduction to the project. This reduction is for material delivery alone. A chain reaction of other related costs can also be reduced. This is an actual project example. Some of the more obvious cost considerations on a project are materials, transportation, product handling, and erection. Material savings can range from 3% to 20% most commonly between 5% and 10%. On this mid-sized project, the client saved over $120,000 in materials for a $1.3 million project, a material savings of 9.7%. Transportation. On average, 17 tons of joists can be loaded on a truck. By reducing tonnage on the project, transportation went from 55 trucks to 50 trucks. This translated to over $6,000 in savings on transportation. Product handling. Based on an estimated $10 per ton cost for loading and unloading, the client saved around $1,700 on the project. Erection. The piece count was reduced by 270 pieces. Based on the approximate cost of $1 per square foot for erection, the project netted 10% in erection savings approximately $60,000 in prevented erection labor costs. This resulted in an overall savings to the project of around $190,000. Other costs can come into play on any project, including design errors, logistics, storage, and lost occupancy income. Take design errors, for example. If five 30K 12 bar joists need to be redesigned and resupplied, this could add more than $6,000 to a project. In the areas of logistics and storage, these cost savings will vary based on local market conditions and vendor agreements. It is a cost that is often overlooked. And then there's lost occupancy. The project gets delayed and the owner can't collect retail dollars, or a manufacturer can't get rolling on production. Even a small retailer like AutoZone can lose $3,000 a week in revenues when a store doesn't open on schedule. The current request for information process needs tighter collaboration. The RFI process is broken, largely because structural drawings are often up to 40% incomplete. RFIs are being used for documenting and defending inertia instead of fostering clarity. Clashes and related project delays lead to costly contingency fees. Alternatively, the RFI process should foster communication and aid in the prevention of unnecessary project costs. A study of steel fabricators was conducted to seek their views on the construction process. A common concern is that the traditional bid-build process is inefficient because the RFI process itself is so inefficient. By acknowledging the problem of cascading costs and the broken RFI process, we can at least address the challenge of total project cost accountability. 
Proactive engineering during the steel joist and decking phase can significantly minimize contributions to total project costs. This can be done by reducing tonnage, preventing clashes, optimizing the design, and by taking a closer look at metal decking design. Every ton of steel removed roughly translates to a $1,000 reduction in material costs. Here are two ways to cut material costs. First, reorienting the framing can save one quarter pound per foot or 50 cents per square foot. This enables the steel contractor to coordinate with the exterior wall contractor and potentially save thousands of linear feet of bent plate. Second, Updating the diaphragm load data can cut costs for metal deck fastening, including the use of lighter deck gauge. It's best for you to select the most economical joists up front. For this reason, economy table tools have been developed, including new online lookup tables that allow you to quickly drill down to the most economical option. These tools consist of simple entry fields. Rather than plow through various reference charts, a specifying engineer has everything in one place. For example, to specify the right joist designation, select the type of joist and use the related lookup tool. The tool shown here is for a K-series joist design. Joist designation was arrived at based on choosing lowest weight and ASD design methodology. Note that OSHA erection bridging is required for this joist. If we want to compare the cost of a joist without this requirement, we have this option as well. Here is a tool for specifying a special profile joist. Once again, the application parameters are entered and a joist designation is provided along with options for lowest cost. Careful steel decking design can cut costs several ways. One way to design for cost control is to maximize deck capacity by increasing joist spacing for actual loads and by specifying a standard deck thickness rather than a standard gauge. By increasing joist spacing, we can decrease the number of pieces, resulting in lower total project costs. Here is a bay with standard joists spaced five feet apart. By changing the joist spacing, we achieved a 12% reduction in weight and a related 22% reduction in erection costs. Further savings can be achieved by designing for actual loads. Load-based design in this bay application brought us to an even higher 17% weight reduction with a 22% erection savings. On many projects, 1% to 10% of the joist cost can be eliminated. On this mid-sized warehouse project, joist materials were reduced by spacing the joists properly. Here was the standard design data. And here was the proactive design for an overall tonnage and piece count reduction that resulted in a $124,883 savings. This does not include the related additional savings for shipping, handling, storage, and erection. Here is another example where we started out with assumed loads, and we then converted these based on calculations of the actual loads. Increased girder depths were recommended to attain further savings. Increasing the girder depths on this project resulted in an $86,000 savings to the project. Savings vary and may not match tonnage savings due to nominal increases in labor and delivery.